What's going down, DGENs? Guys, we did it. We've succeeded. We can retire. We can call it a season. We're one and all in the fucking week. Let's fucking go. I'm gonna go sleep on that one unit I got just tucked away in my pillow. Anyways, it feels good to get the win on a Thursday. Enough, you know, blowing myself here. Let's get right into it. The reason we're all here, the reason that we like this channel, the reason that you should subscribe, like, comment, give me money, subscribe to Patreon, make fake accounts, get another YouTube channel, get YouTube premium, all that shit for these data analysis high points here. If you're looking at the screen right now in front of you, this is the coaching algorithm, the DVOA algorithm, whatever you want to call it, you feel free to go right the hell ahead. These are numbers that I put together. This is my own unique, proprietary, you know, self-important bullshit. Anyways, it this number, this score, the grade here, it is the coaching grade. So this is the grade that we're giving to each individual coach. The expected points that we uh, should see or expect to see from the coaching that, that we're putting, you know, that's being put on the field, what we've seen the first four games. I do update this every single week. I will try my best to show this every single week. If I am a jackass and I slack off and I forget to, please hit me up. Let me know. Hey, idiot, you forgot to show us the algorithm. Let's see what the numbers say because we don't want to listen to your idiot ass. And that's fine. I get it. So these numbers here uh, take into account a whole slew of things. It's going to be the DVOA, uh, expected points per attempt, um, QBR, Try to remember all the other stuff, uh, one, one score win percentages, all that kind of fun stuff, right? all the numbers. And we just kind of filter all that down into a score and then expected score. And if you notice, there's really not too much here that's out of the ordinary. The teams that are at the really, really high end and skew really high, again, keep in mind, it's a four-week sample size, so it's not huge. You're going to get some extremes, some outliers. A uh, team like the Dolphins, who's ranking number one, and a lot of that is because of the one week where they put up 70 points. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna happen. Uh, on the other end of things, you know, you have the Steelers and the Panthers that are expected to get like seven points a week. Um, just the, you know, opposite end, they've had some bad weeks, some poor showings, and offensively at least, right? Uh, and it's just, it's gonna even itself out. It's gonna work out. It's gonna the, these numbers are actually gonna get more accurate as the year goes on. Uh, unlike the Madden algorithm that kind of loses its value as we go further throughout the week uh, or throughout the year. And if you haven't listened to the channel for very long, or if you maybe only listened this season, you should know that that Madden algorithm, we like it, we use it. I use it pretty much every week for the first four weeks to kind of guide us to some value and things like that. Uh, The problem is the further you go into the season, you know, more players get injured and there's not a... It's a little bit harder just from a data endpoint, uh, data input process to get the updated rankings in there with the injuries and the replacements and the surprise injuries and the surprise replacements. And on top of all that, Madden, uh, just the Raiders at Madden are much less accurate at rating players that they have such a small sample size on. So like rookies, um, guys that have been like, you know, true journeymen in the league that have like 50 snaps to their name over 10 years. Like, it's kind of hard to rate those guys accurately. So that's one thing. The other part is the coaching. The Madden algorithm is there to tell you, with an unbiased look at things, how good players should or should not be on each individual team that we're looking at. But eventually, coaches start to change their style, their schematics, kind of play to the strengths of their players and and just who they have left right after injuries and things like that they have to change up their their approach so those things aren't really great with the madden algorithm so we switch over to this one and like i said this one does get better as we go on throughout the year so take a look at it uh, maybe look at some teams that you are trying to focus on like i said in previous videos you really want to focus on like four to eight teams depending on how much time you have uh, then you can kind of work on every week, watch those games, make your own opinions. And that way you have at least some sort of lean in the games and you, you can maybe predict those teams a little bit better than you would others. Uh, aside from that, maybe take a screenshot of this just so you can kind of get what the expectation is. Uh, one thing that y'all should know if you don't already know this, again, if you're pretty new to the channel, 
guys, I am an open book. Um, I'm just some idiot with a YouTube channel. So I'm not like the be all end all of data analysis and all that kind of stuff. So if you want this, this chart, if you want this spreadsheet, I'm not hiding it from you. Let me know. You don't have to subscribe to a Patreon. You don't have to pay me. Just hit me up, hit me up in the comments. Find me on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Uh, it's pretty much always at, at AG Sports or AG underscore Sports 21 on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. Let me know you want it. Uh, you can DM me. You know, if you don't want to show everybody your, your email or whatever, uh, you know, little dingus at yahoo.com or whatever the hell you're using. And I'll, I'll send it to you. It's not a problem. I'll send it to you. You can play with it. Put your own numbers in there. Do whatever the hell you want to it. Absolutely free. Uh, if you don't like it, you can say fuck you and throw it away. Who cares? So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. Uh, secondly, just to kind of give you a little bit of a glimpse of, of what goes into this thing. Uh, so these are the actual points that were scored in week four. The margin that we were off or on with each individual score. Uh, the one score win, win percentages, your DVOAs. Like I said, this is pretty much everything that goes in there. Success rate, QBR stuff, strength of schedule. These are all things that get uh, accounted for in that coaching grade. So the coaching grade I'm giving is just a simple way to take all of that, filter it down, and not have to look at 20 different websites. So that's number one. Um, oh, sorry. Before I get off this point, this is what we'll be using moving forward, like I keep alluding to. But more importantly, if you get this spreadsheet or if you take a screenshot at it look at it because you'll have kind of an advance notice on matchups for next week uh it may be not uh, immediately up to date because of the you know obviously sunday night i'm not going to be doing all 32 teams the dvoa stuff doesn't even come out sunday night so it'll be a little bit behind but you'll have at least some sort of advance notice and expectation for each individual team and matchup before you get to the, the next week. And for the most part, before a lot of the lines are going to drop. So that's always good. Uh, one thing I, or one other thing I wanted to show you is this totals by week by year. So I just made it into a graph. I feel like that's a little bit easier for you to look at instead of me going through a bunch of numbers. So there's two, 2019, 2020, 2022, and 2023. Uh, fortunately, 2021 was lost due to just some hardware issues. But everything gets graphed here. Uh, 2023, if you'll notice, is kind of a lower scoring year. And I've said that before. Uh, but especially into weeks three and four, it's, it's definitely the lowest average. And it's been lower than most other years just overall. And for week five, you'll notice that two out of the three other years see a dip in week five. Even 2020, which was notoriously a very high scoring year, saw a dip in week five in scoring. Now, any rationale or conclusion I give you to that would just be me kind of hypothesizing uh, whether it's right or wrong. I couldn't tell you until we see week five, but I can tell you that this is the trend line we're seeing, uh, you know, just lower scoring in week five. So maybe some of that is because there's bye weeks or whatever. But anyways, let's not get into me going down a rabbit hole. Just know that if you're looking at these games and you haven't kind of picked a video or picked any plays yet, you may want to stay away from overs. Um, and if you're playing any sort of like fantasy players or anything like that, or daily fantasy especially, you may want to pick the one or two games you think is really going to go over, they're really going to hit, and kind of focus your players around that. Uh, because, again, just the expectation for me and from the analysis is that this week should be a little bit of a down week in scoring, probably an average lower than 44 points per game. Um, yeah, so take that and do with it what you like. There are two plays that are up. Like I said, we are 1-0. The over was the, with Washington and uh, the Bears. And that pretty much went according to plan. Again, both defenses sucked ass. Uh, they, you know, I, as far as the winner, I didn't really give a shit, um, and it was kind of hard to say ahead of time. I yes, I thought the you know Washington was going to win, but I knew that with the defenses that were out there, it was going to be sort of anybody's game. Um, you know, and that's why I didn't want to play the side. So we get the over with the one and zero. The other two plays though. One of them goes hand in hand with this trend line here, which is the Atlanta versus Houston game at under 41 and a half. So these trend lines just make me feel a little bit better about that. Uh, the other game is San Francisco versus the Cowboys. And we got San Francisco minus three and a half. 
And if you look at this here, San Francisco is the second best team offensively, at least according to all of the ratings that we're taking into account here. And the Cowboys are more like an average team, maybe just a slightly above average team uh, offensively. So again, just kind of uh, another little piece of information that I'm looking to back up my pick here. Um, but I did have one other play that I wanted to bring into this here. Now, usually I give you guys a teaser. If you didn't listen to the last video, I'm 0-3 with teasers for the last two weeks. So I'm staying off of teasers this week. I will tell you, I am monitoring a teaser. Um, and if I do, I, you know, if I did put something on it, it's very, very small. More just for tracking purposes than anything. And it was the Texans up to plus 8 uh, combined with, I believe it was the, the Packers plus seven. It, oh, no, sorry, the Rams plus ten and a half is what it was. So Texans plus eight and the uh, Rams plus ten and a half. Those lines have also moved already, but those are really just more, again, for tracking purposes. Don't I would not really want you to, to follow that. That's just because the algorithm's saying to do so. And if it hits, then great. We can kind of work on that next week. If not, it's fine. You didn't lose anything. Um, but what I do want to use in lieu of that is actually a money line parlay. So it's going to be the Chiefs to just outright win against the Vikings. That game is another game that I would expect to get the under with. Uh, I think it's under 52 and a half. Uh, it was under 53 in some spots. But I'm looking at the under in that game. The Vikings are something like 3-1 and one to the under. Uh, and the Chiefs have not really had a great offensive output uh, except for that Bears game, which, again, as I just mentioned, the Bears kind of let everybody do what they want. Um, yeah, so look at the under on that game. But more importantly, looking at the Chiefs to just outright win that game, um, the, Vi the Chiefs have a hard time covering numbers, bigger numbers especially. The Vikings have a hard time winning games, as evidenced by their 1-3 and three record. Uh I don't think you're going to see them cover a whole lot of or win a whole lot of one possession games. Just kind of the regression from last year has already started to hit. And while they may win some, I don't think it's going to be this one. If anything, I think the Vikings maybe get down a little bit bigger early on and then kind of get the backdoor cover to close out the game. But give me the Chiefs to just outright win this. Uh, according to the expectations here, we should think the Chiefs or we should expect the Chiefs to score. It says 29.6. I'm going to say let's round that down uh, by about a half a deviation, which would be about three and a half points. So that brings us down to about 26 points or so. That's about what I'm expecting from that Chiefs game. And the reason I'm rounding it down just a half a deviation is because there was the one game that they really stood out with the Bears. And that's not going to be the same case here. So we're going to knock it down just a little bit. Uh, as far as the Vikings are concerned, uh, they are expected to get about 22 points. So it would be about 26 to 22, which would give us the 48 and the under. But it also is about a four-point differential, which is pretty much in line with what we're getting as far as lines are concerned. It was at four and a half. Now it's down to about three and a half. So right around that four number. Either way, I see the Chiefs winning this game. So give me them as one leg. Uh, I wouldn't want you to do that by itself because it's, it, I want to say, like minus 195. And I don't like to do anything over minus really 135 at the very highest. So for the second leg of this, give me the Ravens to beat the Steelers. Now, the Ravens, if you're looking down the list here, they are number 15 uh, going by the left-hand side, which means they're the 14th ranked team. And they are expected to get about 24 points. Uh, that's... I wouldn't really touch that. I'm not going to round that or change that at all because there's not really any crazy outliers with that Ravens game uh, or with the Ravens four games, I should say. So about 24 points is what we should expect from them. Yet the Steelers are way at the very bottom. Uh, according to this, their expected score is about seven points. The Ravens have a great defense, actually the second, uh, no, I'm sorry, the third ranked defense in the NFL right now behind only the Browns and the Cowboys. Uh the Steelers and anything that's below 14, if you look at the very top of column D, it'll say minimum 14. That is because, again, 21 is the average output that we should see from NFL offenses. For teams that are not good or less than average, uh, let's, you know, typically we're going to go down one standard deviation, which is seven points, which would give us 14. So anything that's below seven, we're going to expect that team to score 14 points. Now, obviously, they're not going to always do that. Some teams, like last week, only scored three points, scored 13 points. 
Uh, you know, sometimes they're not going to get to that. But 14 is where we want to look at and what we want to expect just from a math standpoint. So we're expecting a score of about 24 to 14 in this game, which actually gives us 38, which is actually the over under for that game. Wow. Amazing coincidence on how that works. Right. Just kind of a little insight behind the Vegas lines makers. Um, but 24 to 14 gives us a pretty resounding win for the Ravens. Now, the only reason I'm not taking the Ravens straight up is because one, we've lost the value in that line. But secondly, uh, there is a, just an offshoot chance here that the Ravens kind of back off. You know, they're up 10 points with two minutes to go and the Steelers get some chicken shit touchdown and they get the backdoor cover. So we're trying to avoid that. Uh, also, though, the money line with the Ravens is something like minus 222 or something like that. So take both of these together, parlay the money lines, and it's going to get you a plus 122 to 125, depending on your book. Uh, so you're going to get plus money to take the Chiefs and the Ravens to beat two teams that are inferior to them, according to all the statistics, uh, including my coaching algorithm. So that's the extra pick I wanted to give you. That's the details I wanted to give you, the insight, the charts, all that kind of stuff. And like I said, guys, this is all free info. Don't be scared. I won't bite unless you want me to. Uh, just let me know. I'll, I'll send you the info, send you the data, show you how to play with it, how to rub it, you know, whatever you want to do to it. That's fine. Uh, anyways, that's it for today, guys. Hope you will follow me in taking that uh, money line parlay. Not very often that I do that, but this did seem like a good week for it, uh, especially according to the expectations. Y'all have a great week. See y'all soon. Good luck. And uh, hopefully everybody gets some damn money.